Hi, my name is Monica and welcome back to my book channel. And this is my January wrap up. I know you're thinking to yourself, Monica, it's March. Why the heck are you doing a January wrap up? And the honest answer to that is number one, because I want to. And number two, I wasn't on booktube in January and I read some really cool books in January and I kind of want to document it. So January started off with a freaking bang. I started and finished my first book on January 1st. We were having dinner, it was the end of the night, it was about 1 in the morning, and I decided to go to bed, and I was like, oh, I can't sleep, I'm just gonna read something. And I just downloaded the audiobook for The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkin Reid. And I listened to it until about 3 in the morning, and I loved it. In case you don't know, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is about this aging star from the golden age of Hollywood who has finally decided to give like a final interview. And the interview is all about her love life and about her seven husbands. I just love this book. I gave it five out of five stars. But I love this book not just for the whole romance of it or anything, but there is a friendship in this book which is what I feel friendship should be like and it just made me feel like love is real in so many ways that we don't even think about and it's just such a beautiful read I haven't read the next one uh, Daisy Jones and the Six because I just feel like it can't live up to my experience reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo I will probably read it eventually but because this book focused a lot on that romance between friends which is not a like it's not a romance it's just love that I don't know if I can top that. The second book I picked up in January was Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and this was actually my first Brandon Sanderson book. I know I know that everybody has read uh, the Mistborn trilogy. I have the first book but I haven't read it and I picked this one up and I gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. This book follows the main character Spensa who has always wanted to become a pilot but because her father was a pilot and he did something that made him be considered a traitor, nobody wants her to be a pilot to fight off these Krell that are for some reason attacking humans. But eventually she tries and she tries and she tries and she achieves her goal kind of <laughs> i don't want to give anything away but let's just say this doom slug is life and if you know what doom slug is you know doom slug is life the third book i picked up in january was good omens by i was going to say neil patrick <laughs> what good omens by terry pratchett and neil gaiman and i gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars i absolutely loved it i thought it was funny in the right ways I love Crowley and the angel whose name I will never be able to say. I am so sorry, but I can't do it. <laughs> it's a story about basically the end of the world and about an angel who might not always be so good and about a demon who might not always be so bad and their ridiculously adorable friendship. I would 100% recommend this book and I also recommend the TV show if you really like it. And I think that it would be okay for you to watch the TV show and then read the book or read the book and watch the TV show because they both have their own merits and I think you will enjoy both experiences very much. The next book I picked up in January is this manga called The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe and I gave this one 4 stars. It's about um, a little girl who seems to be living alone with this creature and more the more you get into the story you find out that basically she can't touch this creature because if she does she'll become like him and it seems like her whole village has been turned because of one of these creatures but this particular creature whom she calls master or teacher I think is a little bit different he seems to be a lot more human than all the other creatures like him it's a really sweet story I plan on continuing this series because really I just kind of want to know what happens because the first one is intriguing it's really atmospheric and I just really really enjoyed it next up I picked up one of YouTube's favorite series or at least the first book in one of YouTube's favorite series right now and that is Every Heart a Doorway by 
Shanna McGuire. I'm so sorry. Um, I really try pronouncing, but it's really hard. I don't think this book needs much of an introduction. This just follows a group of kids who've all gone to magical lands and now they're back and they're not very happy about it. I read this as an audiobook and I must say it wasn't my favorite. It was alright, but I didn't really connect with a lot of the characters. It just wasn't my cup of tea, but I still gave it 3.5 stars edging more towards 4 because it was entertaining and I did kind of want to keep going with the series. Next up, I picked up Rebel Rising, A Star Wars Story by Beth Revis and I gave this a 3.5 to 4 stars. I will preface this by saying that I absolutely do not like the Disney Star Wars movies except for Rogue One and I really did enjoy this book. It was, it was nice to see where Jin Erso came from, it was nice to read more about Saw Gerrera and everything like that. And I actually think Beth Revis did a good job, except there was a part in there where I was like, this is too many YA cliches, but I did like it. It was fine, it was fun, and I'm glad I read it. And next I picked up The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapowski, and I did pick this up just to read it before I watched The Witcher TV show, and I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. It was fun, it was entertaining, it was action-packed. One thing you should know before you go into this is that it's more like short stories that have been put together in a book, and that is something that I wasn't expecting but that I was super okay with. It was a lot of fun. I recommend it. In case you don't know this, this is about Gerald. He's a witcher. He's kind of a mutant that can like wield magic and he goes around destroying monsters. That's pretty much it. And it was fun. It was fun. And I absolutely hate that these editions are now out of print and there's a new one because I like these editions. They're fun. I don't know. I like them better than the new editions. So I think I'm going to pick up the rest of the series on Kindle simply because I like this cover art better. Next up, we have The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe, Volume 2. This volume was a little bit less exciting than the previous volume, and I gave it 3 stars. It got a little bit boring, it got a little bit repetitive, it also got really, really confusing, but it, that still doesn't mean that I don't want to continue with the series. I just think that this volume tried to explain too much in too little time, and I was kind of left like, you know, so not my favorite, but I plan to continue with the series because I want to know what happens. And then we get to my second to last book of January, which is Dune by Frank Herbert. I just don't know what to say about this book that hasn't been said but I will say that I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It was by far my favorite read of January. That being said, the first 100 to like 150 pages of this are like, what the actual f I was confused. I was not feeling it. And then I kept reading because I was like, I have to read Dune. I mean, how can I just not read Dune? And I did. And the more I got into the story, the more I started to love it. And now it's probably going to be in my top 10 favorite books of the year. No doubt about it. I love it. It's amazing. I want everyone to read it. In case you're not aware, this book is about Paul. Paul is the son of a kind of witch in this world, in this futuristic world. And he might be a messiah, and it's much more than that too because there's political intrigue, there's family drama, there's a representation of people of color in this book, and they are important, and they are heroes, and there is philosophical wanderings, and it's it has so much. It has so much. Also, if you're into sci-fi in general, you're going to see every single sci-fi movie that you have ever seen in here. It's like, I was reading and I was like, some why isn't everybody writing this man a check? Because clearly, he thought of it first. At least as far as I know, there might be books before this that had those ideas. But as far as I know, there's a reason why this is like one of the pillars of science fiction. If you have the ability to read the audiobook version that is on Audible, 
do it because it's really well acted and there's this part when they start like chanting Muad'Dib, Muad'Dib and I was like yes I'm totally a believer of Muad'Dib. That that was a lot. So why am I putting this on the internet? The next book I read is called A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis and this book I gave four out of five stars to but I, I just I don't know why I don't want to give it the whole five stars but this book is an amazing, amazing feminist view of women helping women heal from trauma. This book is about a woman who's very wrongly sent to a mental institute. Now I will tell you there are trigger warnings here for both rape, sexual assault, and miscarriage. But that being said, this girl is sent to this mental institution and through a lot of <laughs> very strange things that happen, she ends up getting out of there with the help of a doctor who knows that she is not in any way somebody that should be there. And he decides that he's going to use her incredible mind to help him solve crime. He sends her away to another mental institute, but this place is nothing like the original place. And there she meets a group of girls who become her friends who help her heal through the trauma that she has been through. And it's really an incredible story of just women helping women and how men can be allies, but more than that, how men can be friends with women without there having to be a sexual or romantic relationship. And I think we need so many more books like that. So I urge you to please give this book a try, knowing the trigger warnings that I just said, because it's, it's just incredible. And I can honestly say that I haven't read a book like that. I don't think ever. And then the final book I read in January is The Slow Regard of Silent Things, which as you can see, I have the Spanish version, La Musica del Silencio. And this was written by Patrick Rothfuss. And I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book is really hard to explain because nothing really happens in the book, but I don't mind books like that. The only reason I didn't give this a higher score is again, I think so many more books should have a trigger warning for a lot of things and this book has a character who is really consumed and who is really suffering from such intense anxiety and at the time that I read this book I was going through a bout of anxiety myself so it actually didn't help me feel any better in fact reading about her and her panic attacks and things like that because they're not described as panic attacks but it the, the, the main character does have panic attacks was very very difficult for me but the book itself is about Ari which if you don't know she appears in Patrick Roffitt's first book which is The Name of the Wind and this is about her and her life and how she lives in the underground and what things are important to her, the things that happen to her there, her quirks, her anxieties, and everything like that. And it's a beautiful read if you're into books that are more strain of consciousness books instead of books based on like current constant events. But for me, it was just really hard to read at the time that I read it. And the final book I read in January is Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna Mawire. And in this book, we follow two of the main characters from the previous book and how they got to their magical land and how they had to eventually leave said magical land. I gave this book four out of five stars. I really liked it, but that end kind of destroyed my heart a little bit, not gonna lie. Actually, not sure I want to read the rest of the books because oh man it's hard and this is a book about sisters and I'm very sensitive to books about sisters because I have a sister and reading this book was a little bit difficult for me I'm not gonna lie so I gave it a four out of five stars I'm not sure I'm gonna continue with the series like I want to read the last book but the next book in the series is just not something that I'm interested in and that's it that's my January wrap-up and 
boy, was that a lot of books. I had a really good reading month. I'm, I was very happy with most of the books that I read. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope I could continue at this space because really, I hadn't been reading a lot in the last couple of years. And I'm just so happy to be getting back into reading and to be doing this. It's this has been something that I've wanted to do for such a long time and I've been so scared to do it and trust me I'm still terrified and I'm also I still think that it's not good enough but you know what sometimes it doesn't have to be perfect it can just be what it is and what it is is me having fun and sharing my experience reading books I think uh, with like with anything I'll get better with it as time goes on and hopefully you guys enjoy these videos Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!